Hi guys, Barbara here. What I want to share with you guys today are 10 home remedies for minor ailments that plague all of us from time to time. Welcome to Bear Pantry Talk. For those of you who may not know, I'm originally from the country of Belize, located in the heart of the Caribbean. As a child growing up in Belize, my mom's aunt Tylene used to be our caregiver. Whenever one of us would fall ill, she would whip up one of her many concoctions and in no time at all, we'd feel better. So I want to share some of those with you today. All right, guys, so I have my little yellow legal pad here because I took some notes because I want to stay on course, okay? So the first one is a natural cough syrup made with only three ingredients, all right? Let's go into the kitchen and take a look at how to make this elixir. I'm using one tablespoon of really raw honey, one tablespoon of coconut oil, and half a tablespoon of real lemon juice. And then I take it over to the microwave and nuke it for about 30 seconds. And then here we have it, our cough syrup. All right, guys, so if you notice, all those three ingredients were natural, right? So let's take them apart one by one and see the importance of them. The first one is honey, which is known as an antiviral. And studies have shown that honey is as effective as taking cough syrup. And I'm sure that a lot of you know already that most of the cough syrups that are over the counter is loaded with alcohol. So I would prefer to go with honey than to take something that's going to make me sleepy or drunk, okay? Now, and honey also alleviates allergies, all right? The next thing is lemon juice, and lemon juice is known to boost the immune system and also has antiviral and antibacterial properties in it. Drink a cup of lemon juice when you have a stuffy nose and it will clear up, okay? The next thing is the coconut oil, and by the way, that coconut oil was made for me by Joe from scratch, okay? He cracked open the coconuts, made it. It's at his channel, San Hill Boy, okay? I'll put a link or something. Coconut oil is rich in antioxidants, and contains lauric acid, which is antibacterial and antiviral. Coconut oil can be used to help prevent colds, and if you have the cold already, and you take the coconut oil, it will lessen the length of time that the cold stays with you, okay? So, and coconut oil is good too when you um, add it to warm honey or lemon water or tea. Now let's go to my second home remedy. It's another cough elixir, but it's only made with two ingredients this time, okay? So let's take a look at how this is made. For this one, I've diced up half of a red onion. I'm using really raw honey again, and all I do is put it together in a jar like this, and then set the jar overnight to sit, and then this is what it looks like the next day. Just go ahead and strain the onions off, and then use this for your cough syrup, but don't make it for more than three days at a time, because you want it to be fresh each and every time that you're gonna be using it, okay? Notice on this cough syrup, we took out two of the ingredients that we used on the other one that I just showed you. And on this one, all we have is the honey and the onions. Now I'm showing you both because like my daughter doesn't like the smell or the taste of coconut oil. So we don't give her the first one. When she has a cough, we give her this one, all right? Now you already know the benefits of honey. So let's go over quickly the benefits of onions. They have amazing health benefits, all right? They provide protection for your heart and your blood vessels. They lower your risk of cancer. They help prevent bacterial infections and last but not least, they have amazing anti-inflammatory properties in them, okay? So this not only helps with your cough, but it would also help you if you had a sore throat, which is my third thing on my list of 10 home remedies, sore throats. This one comes to me by way of my Aunt Kathy, who's an LVN, okay? Let me show you guys. Popsicle. I have it kind of stuck to this plate because I wanted to show it to you guys. This is a healthy popsicle that's sugar-free and made from um, pomegranate. You always want to get the healthier ones, the fruit ones, or even some that's made from Pedialyte. You can make that yourself, all right? Now, let me tell you how it works. You know, when your throat is sore, it's inflamed. And so this is essentially like ice, and it will take down the inflammation from the inside. So, you know, just like you would get a sprained ankle, you would put ice on it, right? That's how this works. Now, you might say, well, Barbara, I can just suck on a cube of ice. Absolutely, you can do that. But why do that when popsicles like this say so fantastic, they're refreshing, and when you're sick, to get something that's refreshing is amazing, okay? So I would suggest that you go with the popsicles. Now let's move to number four, another home remedy for sore throats. This one, probably all of you already know, mix some salt and water or some hydrogen peroxide with water and gargle with it. Now I want to show you guys the mixing ratio, okay? So let's take a look. In this measuring cup, I have half a cup of water, and then I'm just gonna add half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, stir it well together, and then gargle. This is the one for the salt and water. It's one cup of water and half a teaspoon of salt. Stir it up and gargle. 
All right, so those two remedies came from my Aunt Tylene when we were little kids and got sick. She would mix up her little concoction with these two things and we would gargle with one or the other and we would feel better. I want to warn you guys about sore throats though. If they last longer than three days or if you look on the back of your throat and you see it coated with something white or if it comes with a fever, you want to go get seen right away because sometimes it can be strep and strep is very serious and not to be played with, all right? So you always want to be very um, careful when it comes to sore throats. So the next remedy is number five and it involves popsicles again. So this one has to do with when you get the stomach flu. You guys all know that when you get the stomach flu, you get diarrhea and vomiting a lot of the times. Well, the doctor wants you to stay hydrated because that will prevent you from being hospitalized or even possibly dying. Now, it's very hard to stay hydrated when everything that you drink comes right back up. So this is my remedy for it, okay? You take a popsicle and you just enjoy it and eat it. And you might bring it back up, but you just go and eat another one, right? That's why you want healthy popsicles in the house at all times, because I want to show you guys the difference between the volume that a popsicle gives and the volume that you would have to drink if you were to drink like a cup of water to try to stay hydrated, all right? You see this? So this is why popsicles are best when you have vomiting, because you don't want to put any volume in the stomach, because the stomach is a very, um, the stomach is already angry and PO'd, so to speak. But if you eat the popsicle, you will stay hydrated and you will get over that stomach virus, all right? Now the next one is number six, and we're back to honey again. Use honey in the home instead of neosporin for minor cuts and burns, all right? Now I've had some deep cuts before because you guys know that I have the cooking show and sometimes I do cut my hand, and I'll put the honey on it and immediately it'll look sutured or if I had stitches. And when it comes to burns, that's what I reach for, but it has to be the organic um, honey that's not pasteurized, and meaning that it didn't go through any kind of heat. Don't get just the store-bought stuff that you would put in your tea, okay? You have to get the good honey, and you put it right away on these injuries, and it will heal it almost immediately, way better than Neosporin. If you don't believe me, test it. Test it when you get another cut. Put Neosporin on a piece and put honey on a piece and see how it works, okay? I, I wish I had that test to show you guys, but I promise you it does absolutely work. And I have a video at the site already telling you how the honey cured my acid reflux disease and that's burning from the inside and it heals that. Now it can also heal burns from the outside. Kind of like you see my son right here putting it on, on his hand. He got a cut and a burn, <laughs> so um, he's putting the honey on. Number seven is earaches. Now this remedy will not heal an ear infection, all right? This is only to soothe the symptoms of a really bad earache. What you want to do is get a blow dryer, put it on the warmest settings, and then have somebody help you tug on the top of the affected ear, and then just go ahead and blow that warm air into the air until the pain goes away, all right? Don't get it too hot because you don't want to get burned. So now we're on to number eight, and we're to the point now where they're getting kind of weird and kind of funny at the same time. This one has to do with vinegar and brown paper. Actually, apple cider vinegar and brown paper. Remember the nursery rhyme or the little poem or whatever it is, Jack and Jill? They mend his head with vinegar and brown paper. Okay, don't laugh because it works. My mother-in-law swears by this. Whenever she gets a sprain or a strain to her muscles, she uses vinegar and brown paper immediately. And let me show you how this is done, okay? This one's pretty simple. I'm using the apple cider vinegar. Any brand will do. I have four or five brown paper sacks here. All I'm gonna do is cut off the bottom part because it's too thick. Stick it in this dish, pour the apple cider vinegar on top so it can be well soaked. Put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds or hotter if you can tolerate it. Put it on the bruised or sprained area. Tie it on with a piece of rag and just leave it there for a little while, okay? Pretty easy, right? Don't knock it until you've tried it because this stuff has been around since 1868, all right? Now, remedy number nine has to do with when you have an acute attack of asthma. Now, let me preface this by letting you guys know that you should always take your asthma inhalers the way the doctors advise you, okay? All of us are asthmatic to a degree in my household, but my son, Jory, was born with asthma. He had his first attack when he was 13 days old. The rest of us only develop asthma because of the area that we live in, because it starts out with allergies and so on. Now, Jory has to take a preventative medicine and he has a fast-acting inhaler, while the rest of us only have fast-acting inhalers. A few years ago, I went to a party that my husband dropped me off at, and I forgot my asthma inhaler in the car, and I had an attack. So while they were calling 911 and calling for him to come back, 
an old lady at the party gave me a tall glass of ice water to drink and she said that the ice and the coldness from the ice would open up my airways and it certainly did within 10 minutes I had recovered by then Joe had brought my inhaler and I was able to take that medication and I didn't have any need to go to the hospital so it really and truly works I hope you never have to use this remedy but just practice it and keep it in the back of your mind should in case you ever have to use it or if you see someone in distress that suffers from asthma because a lot of people suffer from asthma and then you can offer up this valuable information at that time okay now number 10 which is last but not least has to do with leg cramps if you suffer with those painful annoying leg cramps that are also known as charlie horses let me tell you this remedy absolutely works okay you may or may not have heard about this before and you may kind of laugh at it when you hear about it but i promise you it works all right guys so i brought you in here on an excursion to show you guys what you do so this is a bar of ivory soap. See, it says ivory on it. This one's old and tired, and it does lose its strength in about three months, okay? So I got a new bar here. You can get these at the 99 cents stores, the small ones, like three to a pack for 99 cents. This one happened to be one for 99 cents. It's a bigger bar. Not by much, though. So you want to go ahead and open it from the wrapper. A lot of people that I tell this thing to, I forget to tell them to open it from the wrapper, and then they're not getting any relief because it's tied up in the wrapper no this one's not even opening so great but I'll get it cleaned up so open it from the wrapper guys and see it's a white soap and I really do think the color matters because when I tried the dark the colored soaps they didn't work so this is my side of the bed and if it's my left leg that's affected what I do is set the soap where I'm going to put my left leg if it's my right leg I set it there and when I make my bed I just leave it in there I don't take it out okay that's the new one that I started I want to show you guys that you can actually use this one too. It's not completely white. This is Yardless London and this smells so amazing because it has lavender in it. And you know studies have shown that it's probably the, uh, the scent that they put in the soaps that makes this thing work. And let me tell you guys something. I share this with a pastor I know because his mom suffered a stroke and she tried it and it worked. And after she got better and she learned that I was the one that told her son about it because I'm from Belize, she made up her mind that it's actually probably voodoo or obia and she stopped using it. And I'm like, whatever. I know I told her what to use and it works. Okay, so you guys try this, your next leg cramp. I get leg cramps because um, I forget to watch my potassium and rehydrate myself after I take a diuretic because of Meniere's. I don't know what the reason is that you'd be getting leg cramps, but whatever the reason is, try it and see if it works. What does it hurt, right? It's just a bar of soap. So, just wanted to show you guys how to do it. So this one, I'm not gonna throw it away. We're gonna use it to wash our hands or whatever, but after three months, it's lost its power and it's not gonna work anymore, all right? So there you have them, guys. 10 home remedies for anything from sore throats to vomiting to coughs to earaches, cuts, burns, asthma, sprains, and leg cramps. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please rate, like, and subscribe. Please share it with your friends and family for me. And also, if you have your own home remedies that you would like to share with me, just go ahead and put it in the comments area below, and I'll test them and try them. And I'll come back and make a part two to this video and give you guys all the credit, okay? Thank you so much for your time. Until next video, see you guys. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. And please check out my other two channels right here on YouTube. The cooking show called The Bear Pantry Show and my vlog channel Babs Bear Talk.